Hello students, hopefully you must be enjoying whatever all we have discussed in kinematics. So this is being the last part of this particular topic. We have already understood about the relative motion between two different objects. So the two objects can either be moving or it can be at rest. Either, either of them can be at rest. We are now going to generalize that to the concept of curvilinear motion. What does curvilinear motion actually stand for? When the object is moving in a curved path, for instance, let's take the case of a, a car moving in a curved road. When the car is moving in a curved road, obviously, even though its speed may be constant, it may be moving at a constant rate, but its direction is changing at every instant. Since its direction is changing at every instant, so therefore, that velocity is changing and therefore there is a force acting on an object. So taking the EQ from this, will understand about curvilinear motion in this last part. So what do we understand about the other type of motion? Let's say talk about the curvilinear motion. So talk about the curvilinear motion when the particle is moving along a curve not in a straight line. That is what is meant by curvilinear motion. So its velocity is changing at every instant of time because it is moving. So therefore it is going to be an accelerated motion. In this case what we are going to say that the position vector of a particle at time t is going to be defined by a vector with an origin O. So if I say that uh, this is the vector, this is the origin, so at every instant of time, if I say r is the position vector of the point P, r prime is going to be the position vector of the point P prime, and so on. So as a result, as a result, what we are going to say is that it's going to be the position occupied by the particle at any instant of time. So if I say that if I consider that the particle occupies a position P, which is given by some displacement R at time T, and P prime is given by R prime, in that case the velocity of the particle P can be given by delta R by delta T, which is nothing but in the limit delta T equals to zero, so this is going to be equal to dr by dt, which is nothing but the instantaneous velocity. The similar manner we can say that delta S, delta S basically is not the displacement, it is a distance. So it is starting from this particular point, let's say. So from here to here, how much is the distance it covers? So this is how we find out the instantaneous speed. As you can see, this is a, this is with an arrow, so it's a velocity. So it is going to depend with respect to the position vector from the origin material. 